All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks and welcome to our 2022 signing day ceremony. A month later than normal, but really excited to get to do this again in person with, with families and kids and a, a chance to celebrate uh, the 10 young men in front of us and their families. Um, the coaches in a moment will have a chance to come up and speak specifically um, about the boys that have played for them. Uh, but a, a thought, and this is always dangerous, I try not to go off script, but I'm going to go off script for a minute because the boys just came from an assembly with Dr. Michael Thompson, and they were talking a lot about the day-to-day -day realities of stress and pressure, and not surprisingly, college athletics um, came up. Part of why we do this every year, right, it, it is a, a great chance to celebrate um, while Gilman athletics are still going on, right, the in some way the, the bridge to a new experience and the culmination of what for the boys in front of us and their families, I'm sure, has been uh, a stressful process, um, ultimately rewarding. I, I think it is important for us to recognize that in the last couple of years, that stress has only grown. So in the last time we did this in person, in 2020, there were 25 boys up here. Um, the reality of why that number is different speaks to the reality and stresses lots of you all have gone through here in the last two years. The college recruiting process, always stressful, is full of more unknowns and uncertainties that, than ever before. Transfer portal, grad transfer eligibility, extra years of eligibility because of COVID. Um, I'll give you a, a, a specific example that, that I think about often. Um, so I left Atlanta and came back to Gilman in spring of 2016. Was fortunate enough to help coach a, a football team in the fall of 2015 that, that won a state title in no large part due to we had an unbelievable running back. Best, best player I've ever coached or seen with the ball in his hands. Phenomenal kid. Five foot two and a half. Um, so Zay Malcolm played his last high school football game in 2016. Got accepted and um, played at University of Pennsylvania's a, a Wharton School in Raleigh, 2016, last high school football game. I wrote him a note at the end of this fall. Five years later, one no COVID season. Um, all 10 guys up here will go through trials and tribulations and older guys playing in front of you and, and have to work through adversity, and that's all the great parts of sports. I wrote him a congratulatory letter at the end of this fall. He's going to graduate from Penn. He was already actually already graduated, was in grad school this year at Penn. Five years later, congratulated him on a wonderful career. He wrote back and said, Coach, great to hear from you. By the way, I've got a year of eligibility left. And with two degrees, we'll be in the transfer portal for his sixth year of eligibility. So totally insane and crazy um, times we've gone through. And I think just highlights again how, how special um, the, the perseverance uh, of the 10 young men in front of you is um, and, and how special the opportunity that they earn are. So, um, you know, it, it, we've always talked about and as we talk with families about this process, right, the reality is in a year we'll go from being the oldest and probably biggest and strongest to compete with 18 and 22 year olds. But these 10 for the last couple of years in the recruiting process have been competing with 22, 23 and 24 year olds. Um, so again, kudos uh, for being here today. A couple thank yous. I'd be remiss if we didn't start with. Um, so first, thanks to, to all the folks that actually make uh, this happen here today. Mr. Flint, Mr. Lozano, uh, Mr. Chicante, who, who has us on GTV right now, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Ruark. We're so fortunate, right? We have a, a alum and teacher at Gilman who also has probably had more uh, athletic photos in the Baltimore Sun than anyone else in the last 20 years. So we're, we're fortunate for their help making this happen. Um, I think also the, the one thing I try to make sure we do every year, and, and boys, this is directed at you. So we're here to recognize you and your hard work and your accomplishment today. But the reality is to get to today, it takes more than you. It takes a village. You're here in large part due to the support of others. That includes your teammates your youth coaches and club coaches, your teachers here at Gilman, your coaches here at Gilman. But no one has sacrificed more to get you to the stage today than the folks in the first couple rows, your parents um, who, who have given time and energy and love and devotion to, to get you here. So please, 
before we get to talking about how amazing and wonderful each of the 10 of you are, join me in a moment in thanking your parents for all their hard work to get you here. So thank you. Let's now hear about the boys, the reason we're here. So first, uh, Coach Sheets and baseball. This year we, uh, we have one, one young man, uh, Riley Holcomb. Um, Riley Holcomb. Work ethic second to none. He, he uh, has been able to uh, increase his fastball nine miles an hour over the, over the year. I mean, that's, in, that's incredible. If anybody walks by the field out there, they see him throwing almost every day. Um, he's been able to, to work on his swing, hit the ball over the ballpark now, which is huge, right, Riley? Um, another thing that I would say about, about Riley is, is he is one of the nicest young men that I have ever coached. Uh, I, I enjoy being around his smile, and um, he's just a he's a he's a pleasure to have on the team. We're we're also expecting big things from him in this spring from both the, the mound and and home plate. And so Riley will be taking his uh, baseball skills to Occidental College in Los Angeles. Congratulations, Riley. Chris, if you, don't, if you don't mind standing up for the camera here. So um, des describing Christian Winborn here, um, when I thought all, about all the you know, areas where I could have highlighted, I just thought, you know, Coach Holly saying B. Gilman, I thought of the term student athlete. Um, and I, th I thought about all the things that Christian represents and, and wanted to highlight a few of those things there. Um, and as we know, you know, student athlete, senior year, you know, Christian had all these scholarship opportunities, plenty of schools chasing him high GPA, wonderful kid. Seniors tend to maybe slow down a little bit senior year, kind of take their foot off the gas. Uh, so just to share Christian's senior year course load, African-American literature and history, literary theory, world religions, environmental sustainability, neurobiology, and AP statistics. Um, so that I thought was a great snapshot of what Christian's about off the floor. Um, on the floor, um, going through his kind of laundry list of truly incredible and unique statistic uh, achievements here on the floor. Um, 83 games, 1,276 points. Um, he started 80 of the 83 games. The three were his freshman, sophomore, and junior years where he allowed a senior to start in his spot for senior night. Um, over his final 53 games, uh, sophomore, junior, and senior season, he scored 1,076 points alone for a 20.1 point per game average, um, missing almost a full season due to COVID uh, point-wise. You kind of get the calculations of how high that number could have been um, for such an incredible player. He finished, uh, he, was, he was ranked as the number 39 point guard in the entire country by ESPN um, and number one in the state of Maryland. But, um, you know, all that stuff's great, and I, I didn't want to diminish it at all because Christian puts so much time into his craft and truly loves the game. But to me, that's just not what makes him one in a million. Um, you know, I learned so much in fundraising at my previous school that, you know, our society and everyone, they want an outcome for their investment. Like, they need to see outcomes, you know. So I thought about that in reverse, and my first meeting at Gilman when I came here, um, my three outcomes were character, attitude, and effort. Um, and I wanted to share Christian's outcomes on those three pillars uh, to finish up here because he represents everything we want our program to. Uh, from a character standpoint, helped build a, a culture for four years, taking a leadership role in establishing our character education program with Coach Gouline. 
he played for the same AAU and obviously high school team throughout all four years of high school, which some of you that know the basketball culture, that might be the biggest accomplishment that I'm sharing today, um, actually. So um, pretty unique uh, there for Christian. Played the entire AAU season this past summer, even after committing to St. Joe's because he didn't want to let his teammates down. Uh, and finally, the second of the season he ended, he sent a text to the entire team telling anyone who's size 12 to grab any of the free shoes he had gotten from Under Armour over the years out of his locker. Uh, attitude, never once had to sub him out for bad attitude, interaction with a referee or opponent. He faced endless boxing ones, double teams, and three years of teams designing game plans to, to make his night annoying as possible. He accepted any role we asked of him despite what he might have to personally sacrifice. Great story from this past season that I shared with his parents. Playing at Loyola, his jersey was ripped halfway up his rib cage. He's right in front of our bench, and he said to the guy guarding him who had ripped his jersey, can you please stop holding me? Um, so um, he even used his manners then, which was great. Um, so effort, last one. Um, I know Coach Sheets is uh, excited about that last one there. Um, you, I just want to take a minute um, to share a, a, a teacher just grabbed me in the hall, just compl random walk into class. Said, hey, man, I, I just want to tell you, if, if I had a, all students with Christian's work ethic, this would be the easiest job on the planet. Completely unsolicited. Um, and, and again, just shows the, the mark he's left on our community. Um, those of you that have heard this before, he chased me down sophomore year after a game with two ice bags on his knees to meet him in the training room to go over one geometric proof that he couldn't figure out as a sophomore. Um, we had to teach him why. 5 a.m. workouts before school as a freshman weren't good for his body. Um, his parents told me stories of, of making him turn off middle of the night alarms to get up to study. Um, and again, those, those all kind of just summarize who he is. And, and lastly, um, the St. Francis game um, to me showed so much. His first half was maybe the most discombobulated first half I'd seen him play, and understandably so. He was so sick. Um, and we were down 27 in the second quarter, um, went in at halftime. And you could just see the look change um, in his face. Um, scored 18 points in the second half. Um, literally, sorry for the specific reference here, taking him out of the game so he could be sick and then immediately going back in. Um, but, but before the game, I'll never forget it. As a coach, you definitely have some crazy ideas sometimes, or you say crazy things, or people kind of like, what were you thinking? Um, I've never been more disconnected from reality when I was with Christian alone in the locker room. Um, he was getting sick. The, the clock's ticking down like two minutes before tip. And I'm like, Christian, you know what, man? Like, we, we got your back. Like, you, you're with us no matter what. You don't have to play. He's still holding on to the toilet and, like, gave this look at me. Like, I was like, all right, man, that's all right. Like, you can play. It's cool. You know, um, it, he's, he's just that kind of kid. And, and it was for all the right reasons. Um, Lastly here, it would be criminal if I didn't mention all of his success with his character, attitude, and effort. Um, obviously come as no surprise as I look out and see his family here um, that have done an incredible job raising a young man that has changed both my life personally and professionally. Uh, make sure you tune into the Atlantic 10 next year um, because you're going to see St. Joe's climbing the rankings each week while Christian's politely asking opponents to stop ripping his jersey getting straight A's in the classroom, giving shoes to any teammate that needs a pair, size 12 only, uh, and finding a way through any obstacle presented. Tough to follow Coach Bartz. Wow. Um, well, I'm going to start just by addressing the whole group of seniors this year. Um, this year's group of seniors is very special to me because we all got here together. We all came here in June 2018. And, uh, you know, personally, I have a, a sentimental weakness for this group. So we all got here together, and uh, I think we quickly all realized that we had uh, a pretty serious challenge in front of us. <laughs> it didn't take long to 
to look around and look at the, look at the league and know what we were up against. So uh, it really would have been easy for any of these guys to leave and to find an easier path, um, or maybe a path a path less difficult. But they stayed the course and uh, showed great perseverance. And left the Gilman football team in a much stronger position than when they arrived. So I know we didn't make it all the way to the mountaintop that we were shooting for, but um, if the goal was to make your team better, fellas, I would definitely say mission accomplished. So uh, with that, I'll get into the, uh, the personal individual stuff. I'll have Colt stand up in front of me. I may have to step to the side a little bit. <laughs> Six foot seven. Um, Colt has shown an inc incredible growth throughout his time here at Gilman. I've said before, and I'll say it again, I honestly don't think anybody's worked harder than this guy in four years. Uh, he transformed himself from a thin, awkward athlete with a promising frame and a lot of potential to a bona fide standout guy on the field that can physically beat people with size, speed, and strength. Uh, he battled some injuries over the years, several uh, that were difficult, and I know they were difficult for him, and I could see in his face that he wanted to you know, be out there, and sometimes he couldn't. But he always fought through them head on. Now, he never wavered from his goals. He consistently set the bar for himself and his teammates very high and encouraged high levels of work ethic from those around him just by setting the example. By the time Colt's senior year arrived, he had become a true student of the game and a force on the field that other teams had to strategize against. He made huge catches versus Boys Latin, Calvert Hall, Concordia Prep and McDonough, just to name a few, ultimately finished the season averaging 32 yards a, a catch. I believe Colt will, be, will, will keep that fire burning inside of him, and I expect he will do very, very well in his future at Penn State. Congratulations, Colt. <laughs> and finally, certainly not least, Keon Terrain. Keon, if you could stand up for the, for the cameras here be recognized. Thank you. Keon. Keon has been a foundational leader for our football program since the day he arrived. As a coaching staff, we all really immediately noticed his talent at running back. He was born to carry the ball, uh, which he did for all four years. Along the way, he improved his skill and perfected his craft as a ball carrier. He set the tone for his senior year in our 21 season on offense in week one with uh, 137 rushing yards and three TDs versus Edgewood. Really gave us the spark we needed to have a great senior year in 2021. He was also a force on defense. Really did everything we ever asked of him. But in, uh, against Boys Latin, he had eight tackles, three, t three tackles for loss, and two sacks. He was a guy that I knew we could count on if I called his number on defense and decided to blitz him, he would get there. And that's, that's often very difficult to find. As coaches, uh, we knew he would make the big plays if we called his number, and we did it a lot. Keon was a steady, durable, and reliable leader day in and day out for four years. It was because of his hard work and guidance that our program was able to improve the way it did. His leadership will be missed here, and I know he'll do great things on and off the field during his football and academic collegiate career at Bowie State University. Congratulations, Keon. All right. Well, first of all, just want to say thank you uh, for entrusting us with your children. All right, it's not lost on me that I'm very lucky uh, to be working here and have the opportunity to work with such great young men. Uh, the four kids that we're going to talk about are Chase Brody, Kyle Morris, Ethan Villamater, uh, and Craig Williams. All right, first one up is Chase Brody. All right, Tra Chase has played a ton of lacrosse since entering high school. Due to COVID, a lot of it has been played on the summer and fall club circuit uh, rather than on Gilman's field. Over the course of the past year, however, Chase has emerged as a leader of our, of our team and is a vocal presence both on the field and on the sideline between shifts. We look forward to watching him continue to grow on and off the field at West Point in the coming years. Congratulations, Chase.
Next is Kyle Morris. It takes a special kind of person to hop between the pipes and play goalie in the MIA. But it's just what Kyle has done. He's done as well as anyone in the country. He has been dedicated to the lacrosse program at Gilman since his earliest days on the field as a camper at the Gilman lacrosse camp. Always wanted to be as the goalie for Gilman, and he's, and he's achieved that, and we're lucky to have him. A multi-year letter winner in both hockey and lacrosse, Kyle is an emotional and vocal leader of both teams. His play is consistent, and his, and his stubborn determination to prevail with a victory inspires those around him. We look forward to seeing him play at the University of Virginia. Congratulations, Kyle. Ethan Villamater. Last year was my first as a coach of any kind with the Greyhounds. I did not know any of the players, uh, but after day one, I knew we had a special person in Ethan. The support he gives his teammates and the support they give him in return is a rare yet inspirational element to Ethan's game. He wills his teammates to succeed, and, and in return, they will follow him to the ends of the earth. His development over the past two years has been exceptional, and his leadership has carried over from the practice field to the game field. We're excited to see him continue his playing career at Washington, at Washington and Lee University. Congratulations, Ethan. I'm here. Craig Williams. Craig is a quietly determined member of our lacrosse team. He is a humble yet diligent player who has been recognized by his teammates for those meaningful, if largely behind the scenes, contributions. As a midfielder, he consistently puts our defenders on their heels with his downhill dodging and powerful shooting. We are excited to see him continue to develop and progress at Hampton University. Congratulations, Craig. Carter Capadano, Loyola University. I have known Carter for about 12 years, and when we first met, one thing was obvious. He loved the game of soccer. Carter was a member of the varsity soccer team for four years, earning all conference honors this past season. His passion for the game and his high soccer IQ were evident from day one. Carter played mostly as a center back. However, if we needed to change the momentum of the game, he was the player we moved forward. It has been a true pleasure to watch Carter develop as a player. However, it has been more rewarding to see Carter grow as a person. His level of maturity has grown exponentially since entering the program as a freshman. Carter will be attending Loyola University to play for a good friend of mine, Steve Nichols. If I could offer Carter some advice, it would be this. Carter, you will be challenged both mentally and physically at Loyola University. You will be playing for one of the top coaches in the country who will challenge and push you every day to be your very best. Embrace these challenges on and off the soccer field. Never stop believing in yourself and channel your passion for the game in a positive manner. Continue to be a loving son and a loving brother as you strive for excellence each day. Carter, I will truly miss coaching you. However, I guess what they say is true. Once a greyhound, always a greyhound. <laughs> Best of success to you at Loyola University.
apologize uh, for uh, not bringing the tie. Uh, afternoon all, I'm here to congratulate Bryce Lloyd on his acceptance into Johns Hopkins University, where he will continue his swimming career with the Blue Jays. <coughs> Excuse me. In all, Bryce has represented Gilman swimming for six years, two years in the middle school and four on varsity. Personally, I do not recall Bryce not winning an individual race. Um, I entered him in dual meets. During that span, Bryce is the most accomplished swimmer at Gilman in Gilman history. Um, he currently holds four individual event records, the 100, the 200 freestyle, the 100-yard backstroke, the 100-yard butterfly. Um, he is also part of all three record-setting relays. Uh, the 200 and 400 freestyle ra relays, the 200 medley relay. So in all, you will see Bryce's name seven times on the record board. Um, so that tells you a little bit about Bryce the swimmer. Uh, Bryce the person is humble, supportive, intelligent, and all around a good guy. Excuse me. My, a little emotional, um, but also, what can I say, um, my allergies. <laughs> uh, uh, Br Bryce the, um, is an all-around good guy, teammate. Um, Bryce embodies the Gilman Five. Honor, respect, humility, integrity, and excellence. Hopkins swim team will be a very fortunate team to have a young man of Bryce's character and on their roster. We wish Bryce the very best for his future endeavors. Thank you. All right, in a moment, I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Steve Ruark in, uh, uh, for the, the photography session. Um, but first, before we, we go further, right, we got to meet all 10 individually, but um, collectively, let's congratulate the, the senior class that we look forward to watching for, for the next four years. So congratulations. All. <laughs> Uh, and the last thing I'll say, so right, we have sweatshirts and, and 10 different universities. We're, we're excited about that. We have three plus months of competition left here at Gilman. And whether we're on fields or in stands, the reality is that gentlemen with the 10 of you up here, there are lots of eyes watching um, in the upper school, in the middle school, in the lower school. So uh, please continue to be Gilman. Um, you're, you're the best of us. Represent us that way. Um, one of the great things about working at schools, right, is that nothing's linear. Is the school life cycle um, is that. It's cyclical, right? So, so we'll start again, and there'll be another group next year. And the impact that you all make through the coming three months um, will we'll have immediate impacts in the coming year and long-term impacts in the years that follow that. So thanks, everybody, for attending. Go Hound.